Mathematics Ordinary Level Paper 1 2022 Part 3 Let's continue with question number 19. It takes 15 women 42 hours to harvest a field of ground nuts. Okay. It's very important maybe that you underline. So let's just underline. 15 women 42 hours. How many women would be required to harvest the same field, okay, at the same rate in 35 hours? So be very careful. Don't just go for direct proportion. No, no, no. Think. It's the same field. It took 15 women, 40, uh, women 42 hours. Now they make the hours less. So what will happen? They must put in more women. Okay, so the one goes down then the woman must go up, and that's in direct proportion. And you will find this on page 36. Okay, and it's indirect proportion. Okay, so let's just start. That's, I, I like to always do it in my textbooks in this x, y equals k. So that k is representing the field. So if I say 15 times 42... And that will be equal to 630. Okay, so it's almost at 630 is the field. Now I put the 630, but now let's say um, in this case it's x minus 35. Okay, so I don't know the woman, but I know uh, the 35. And then I just divide by 35, and I divide by 35, and if you say 630... Divide by 35, you are going to get 18. Okay, so how many women? They must go not 15, but they must increase the woman to 18. Now, let's go to the report. Okay, so if I look at the exam report, um, this was question number 19. Extremely poorly answered. The minority of candidates could deal with inverse proportion. The common wrong answer was, I think, that they worked on direct, which was rounded to 30. This wrong answer resulted from using direct proportion instead of inverse proportion, but 18 was the answer. Okay, let's start with question number 20. Three sets of numbers A, B, and C are shown on the Venn diagram. Use the Venn diagram to answer the following questions. Okay, find N, B, intersection, C. You will find this in the textbook on page 65, that N. N means how many, count the elements. So if I look at the intersection of B and C, do you see? It's this. How many elements are there? One, two, three. So it's just three. Not in set, it's set notation. It's just counting and writing the answer. Now, list the elements of a union B complement. It means, and you will find it on page 73 in the textbook. So it means if you look at A and B, now A and B, it's all this. Do you see that union? But the complement means the outside. So they want you to list the elements. So what is on the outside? That is going to be on the outside. It's 10, 12, and 15. So not what is in A and B, what is extra. Okay. And then on the Venn diagram, shade the region. Now, before I shade, I always do it like this. I first go and I write down the elements and then I look and I just shade where that elements are. So if I say B union C complement. Now, I'm just going to just clean a little bit. Okay. So if I'm going to say B union C, so B and C and the complement, that will be 5, 7 and 15. So 5, 7 and 15. And then A, what will be A? That will be 3, 5, 7. So 3, 5, 7, uh, 13 and 14. 13 and 14. 14. Okay, so I write it out. Now, what is intersection? What is in both? So I, if I look, I see 5 is in both. 
Oh, sorry, not three, but five. I see seven is in both, and that's that. So I'm just going to show it where's five and seven. And oh, that's going to be in this part. You don't have to color in. You can just, it's that, that part. Just where you see five and seven. And make sure you're not going in the other circles. Okay, and that will be your shading part. Okay, let's go to the exam report. Okay, so let's just see, um, that's 19, and now let's see if I got 20 here. No, that would be the next page there. You can already see the shading, that's correct. Okay, they're going to color it in, but you don't have to. Maybe I can just go back and see if they wrote something about question 20. No, they didn't write anything. Okay, it's interesting. So they just gave you the answers. Okay, so it seems to me the writing disappeared there. So it was free. It was that um, in the set notation. And then list the elements and then the correct shading. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, and that would be this question on this page still. Solve the inequality. And where will I find that in the textbook? In the AS level? Not AS level. In the ordinary mathematics uh, textbook, part 1, grade 10, 11, and it's page 161. Okay, so if I'm going to go, um, I like rewriting it again. It's almost like um, I'm just making sure to focus on it. So the like terms on the same side. It's almost working like an equation. There's only one difference. Okay, so this is going to be 5x. Okay, now it's not, if you divide by positive, the inequality sign stays the same. But if you divide by negative, it swaps over. But you are dividing by positive, so it's actually exactly like an equation. So it's going to be x is bigger than 4. So let's just go again to the exam report and let's see what they are writing there. Okay, so here they are saying, poorly answered, the ma ma majority of candidates simply re replace the inequality sign by an equal sign. No, you have to keep that inequality, although it works like an equation. And wrongly concluded that x equals 4. It's mathematically incorrect. Uh, they, also, they also change the inequality sign at random, only if you divide by a negative. The minority of candidates realize that the inequality sign only change if you divide or multiply by a negative value. So that was the final answer. Okay. And now we go to the next page. The next page is actually nice. It's not so long. Um, so here it is. Just going to make it a bit bigger. It's a bit a difficult concept because it's functions and you usually struggle a little bit with functions, but make sure it's it's like algebra. It's it is very methods and just follow that method. Okay. So I'll give you on in the page in the textbook, part one, you can check there, page two to nine. So two functions, there is your two functions, are given. Find the inverse of G. So first write down G and then go. It's so nicely stated. Step one, step two in the textbook. So step one, make it first a Y. Step two, make the Y a X and make the X a Y. Okay. And then divide by 7. And you divide by 7. And now you actually have y equals x plus 3 over 7. But very, very, very important. So you have to say g minus 1x equals x plus 3 over 7. So you're going to say g minus 1x equals x plus 3 over 7. Okay, so very important that you end by showing it's the inverse, don't? So that the, the last y you change into that. And then find this is composite functions. So just remember, I love, I like rewriting it also again, because I'm going to scratch on it now. And you can also do that, it's fine. You can use your pencil for that. So let's make it blue, my pencil. Okay, so if, I, if I'm going to ask you, 
um, I'm first going to write in red. I'm asking FGX. So what does this mean? You must start at the back. So you go to G, make a circle around, and you're going to throw it in F in the place of X. Okay, so basically you are going to say, okay, 19 minus 4, and now I'm going to say 7X minus 3. And that's going to be 19 minus 28X plus 12. And that is going to be 31 minus 28X. And I can end by saying FGX equals 31 minus 28x. Not, not a very, there's no squares or square roots. It's really not so difficult. Oh, can I just tell you the page in the textbook? I didn't tell it there to you, but I can show you. So go in the textbook and still practice a few in the y equals mx textbook, page 233. Three. Okay, so I'm just going back. So basically, I'm just going to say, um, no, it's to the exam report that I want to go. Um, it's question number 22. Okay. I just want to get this away. Okay. In general, it seems as if the concept of functions notation was not taught properly in most schools. So question A is the inverse function. It's moderately answered. Many candidates succeeded in interchanging the x and the y values, which is always the first step when asked to find the inverse. The algebraic manipulation to make y the subject of the formula was poorly executed. It was regularly seen that the interchange of x and y was done together with a wrong first step to make y the subject of the formula. These candidates failed to gain any marks for the question. So if I can give you advice, don't do too many things in this. First, just put the Y, then change the Y into the X. Maybe you can get a mark and we will see now. Yes, so basically for just getting up to there, you already got one mark. Okay, and then you could have, if you, then you, the negative, I came to this, but if you came to this, you would have been also. And it seems to me they was not so strict, strict on the G minus 1X, but they are very strict in AS level. So it's always good to rather know the fine details and the mathematical concepts, because it's just going to save you if you go further in mathematics. And then number B, poorly answered. Some candidates realized the correct order of the compound function, but failed to find the correct solution due to algebraic mistake. Sadly, it was often seen that the order of the compound function was turned around. Another common mistake was to form an equation and calculate a value of x, so now it's, it's expression, instead of leaving the final answer as the requested expression. Some candidates just equated the f and the g, and then solved the equation instead of finding the compound function. And there is your final answer. Okay. And they gave you already a marked for just when you did the substitution, even if you didn't multiply it out correctly. As your final exams approach, I want to highlight the importance of the y equals mx plus c mathematics textbooks. If you don't have them yet, you can find them at the following bookshops. These textbooks will be your reliable study companions, guiding you towards mathematical success. For educators aiming for exceptional maths exam results, start using the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbooks used by leading schools in your classroom. They are part of the NEET catalogue and can be easily obtained within your ministry's textbook budget. Make sure to communicate your request to your region's procurement department to empower your learners with the best educational resources. Furthermore, schools have the option to place direct orders with us and we offer bulk order discounts. Reach out to us via email at the address below. Best of luck in your maths journey.